today, which will be Yashwan Gupta, who's going to tell us about uh, the SK uh, from the Indian perspective and the work that we've been doing uh, over the last many years. Over to you, Yashwan. Okay, thank you, Gesh. I'm going to share my screen and then you have to just tell me whether you can see the presentation. Uh, can you see that? I can see that and uh, I can see it in, in full screen mode as well. Yeah, so I think we are good to start. Okay, and is it sort of fitting in the screen? Because on my screen it's... Uh, it is going out a little out. bit. Yeah part is is out let me just it's just that uh, I, you, yeah is that correct now uh, yes this is this is better the presentation mode that you yeah. just okay so um uh, good afternoon to all and uh, uh, good morning to Phil and uh, Joe. Uh, so usually when I give a talk of this kind in a SKA workshop in India, I need to start with a long preamble about what the SKA is and uh, uh, what are its specs and uh, what's been done. Uh, but today, thanks to the excellent coverage by Phil and Joe, uh, I don't need to tell you all about what the SKA is and what are the plans for building it. Uh, and I will therefore plunge straight into uh, the main focus of my talk today, which is about what is it that we have been doing uh, in India um, in terms of our participation in the uh, various aspects of uh, the SKA. And so I'll just start with a bit of a background uh, because, again, there is a diverse audience here. I know there are lots of um, uh, younger uh, members, students who are connected and uh, and so I will just start with just a bit of a background about what has been the history in India in radio astronomy. And uh, the fact of the matter is that we do have a fairly strong tradition uh, going back from the 1960s when radio astronomy started in India. And um, there are many institutions where, uh, you know, there is active pursuit of radio astronomy uh, with NCRA and RRI uh, being perhaps the two uh, of the most well-known institutions in India doing radio astronomy over the years. Um, but uh, there are uh, a few others like the Indian Institute of Astrophysics, the Physical Research Lab, and today uh, more and more of uh, the new institutions, the ICERs and the IITs and uh, the other universities uh, getting into radio astronomy. So it's, uh, it's growing uh, significantly in India. And that is one of the reasons that gives us some uh, uh, some uh, uh, some good confidence to be able to be a major partner in the SKA. Um, and it's, uh, we also have some world-class facilities like the GMRT, which uh, has already been talked about, uh, which uh, has been uh, active from, from 2002 onwards. It attracts users from all over the world for various kinds of science. And uh, what makes it even more useful uh, is that we recently completed a major upgrade of the facility, which was released a, a bit over a year ago. And uh, that has uh, uh, further enhanced uh, the capacity. And uh, it enjoys the status of SK Pathfinder facility, which was again talked about. And that means it has both relevance for science and technology developments. And just, just an example of where the upgraded GMRT stands uh, in terms of sensitivity vis-a-vis -vis the other facilities. And you can see that this, uh, why, uh, you know, one could be doing interesting science with the upgraded GMRT, which would be a stepping stone uh, towards being able to do uh, the next generation of even better science uh, with the SKA low uh, in terms of the sensitivity capabilities. And in terms of the technology developments, you already heard this example being talked about, that there are things that you can do in terms of technology development, uh, which can be useful for the learnings for the SKA. And uh, Joe mentioned about the general process of learning from the existing large facilities. And Yogesh uh, gave this specific example about the Tango-based monitor control system that we've developed and are now using for the upgraded GMRT, which is really for us a very useful uh, demonstrator and stepping stone for uh, building the bigger system for the SKA. 
and uh, even other colleagues like uh, uh, particularly the Raman Research Institute have been actively involved in the international projects like the MWA, uh, which is an SKA precursor facility uh, located at the, uh, uh, at the SKA site in Western Australia. And so overall, we have a strong and vibrant radio astronomy community covering many research organizations and universities using both national and international facilities. And uh, that makes us well placed to be uh, participating in a large international project like the SKA. And if we just go back and trace what has been uh, the history of Indian participation, we've been part of the project from the very early days. Um, even some of the early ideas that were tossed about about building next generation large telescopes uh, had contributions from the Indian Radio Astronomy Group. Uh, but more concretely, uh, during what was called the preparatory SKA phase, 2010 to 2011, uh, we actually led the concept design work for uh, an SKA monitor control system, uh, which was uh, accepted by the SKA, uh, which then led to what is uh, what was called the telescope manager during the design phase, which was an activity that we led to talk more about that in a moment. And uh, in 2012, we joined the uh, SKA organization as observer status, and that was NCRA. And uh, in October 2015, uh, this membership was then transferred to full membership uh, with the Department of Atomic Energy uh, representing the government of India. And Phil will remember this from one of his uh, numerous uh, trips to India, the time when uh, the uh, India signed uh, the membership documents um, with uh, uh, the Secretary of the DAE um, uh, doing the honors from the Indian side. And uh, over the years, uh, India has then contributed significantly uh, to the activities, uh, both in terms of science and technology. And I'll talk about that more in a, a minute. Uh, it is uh, for those who may not be aware, uh, the, all the activities um, related to SKA happening in India are coordinated by the SK India Consortium. Uh, and all of that funding uh, up to now has been coming from the Department of Atomic Energy, though as we move forward to the construction phase, we expect this funding contributions to come also from the Department of Science and Technology. And so uh, a moment to just uh, look at what the SK India Consortium is. Um, it was basically set up in 2005 when we uh, joined as a full member in order to grow uh, the activities uh, in a coordinated and organized fashion. And so the SK India Consortium uh, coordinates all SK related activities in the country. Today, there are uh, over 20 institutions uh, uh, that are members. Uh, all the main astronomy research organizations are there. Um, and uh, several of the Indian Institutes of Technologies, the ICERs, the and many universities and colleges are members. And you can see there's a fairly good spread uh, over the entire country in terms of where the membership comes from. And each uh, member uh, institution of the SKIC has one representative in the SK Council, which is the main uh, discussion and decision-making body of the consortium. Uh, we also allow associate membership from individuals. So if you um, uh, want to be a freelance member not associated with any uh, organization, you can join as an associate member and contribute to the activities. Uh, the in, uh, consortium has two main subcommittees, science and technical uh, subcommittees. The science subcommittee coordinates uh, the SKA India science working groups and the related activities, uh, 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 pretty much all activities related to uh, science. Um, and the technical subcommittee coordinates uh, 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 pretty much all the activities related to the participation of India in the SKA work packages uh, uh, which so far was the design phase. And uh, I'll just talk a little bit about the science uh, activities. And uh, so it was uh, around uh, December 2016 that uh, just about uh, uh, two years since the consortium was set up that uh, we were able to organize the scientific community to come out with the first uh, science case uh, for SKA by the Indian community. And it was published, as you can see here, uh, in the Journal of Astronomy and Astrophysics. And since then, there has been a continuous refinement and improvement of that science case uh, with uh, a major revision that happened in June 2018. And more recently, as uh, part of our preparation for putting in the detailed uh, proposal uh, for uh, funding to the government, 
for participation in this 10 year construction period, uh, there is now a, a even further refined and mature science case, which you can find uh, on this particular uh, um, link on the SK India website. And today there are uh, more than 100 faculty postdoc students from these 20 odd institutions that I talked about uh, were involved in this exercise. And we expect this to uh, more than double uh, by the time the SKA is ready for early science. And that's one of the main goals is to be able to uh, have the science community uh, up and ready at a level where they can really make uh, good use of the SKA. And so there's been active participation uh, from the members of the Indian science working groups in the SKA science working groups, including uh, some of them uh, being co-chair in some of the groups. And the range of the science covers theoretical studies, um, simulations, use of SKA pathfinder facilities, uh, in particular synergy with the UGMRT is what we try to emphasize in the working of the science group, but it's not confined to that. Many of the science members have been using other uh, facilities for um, uh, furthering the, the, the work on the science. And uh, for those who are more uh, interested in more details, I'd encourage you to visit the SK India science webpage uh, uh, as seen here, uh, and you will find a full 80 page document about the SK India science case, which we recently prepared and, and is um, available for our ministries to look at as uh, for the kind of science that we have in mind. Uh, and this uh, is something that I do want to just point out in passing that in uh, uh, it was actually this meeting, which I would say was one of the trigger points for really uh, developing uh, the science activities in India. And uh, uh, so we hosted the uh, annual SKA science meeting. Uh, as you can see, it was very well attended. And uh, this was also about the time when we produced that first um, science case document from uh, from the Indian astronomy community. And so this attracted a lot of attention, a lot of the younger generation, people who were not aware of the SK and the science that could be done. And uh, that has uh, caused uh, a significant, uh, you know, uh, given a significant impetus to the science activities in the country. So I'll move from there and talk a bit about the uh, technical activities that uh, India has been involved in. And, uh, uh, you know, you heard about the design phase, uh, which uh, went on from 2014 or so till um, uh, 2019, actually early 2020, when the final design was accepted. And uh, we were involved in three of the design work packages, the telescope manager, where we were the lead country and central signal processing and the signal and data transport at the smaller uh, levels of involvement. And uh, we, uh, working with partners from software research groups and industry, we took the lead role in the design of the telescope manager. And the telescope manager has already been sort of hinted at is one of the uh, critical and uh, all, all encompassing system of the observatory. It is like the brain and the nerve center. It provides the end to end monitor control for the entire observatory. Uh, and uh, there's complex software needed for complete life cycle management, uh, all the way from proposal submission uh, by the users to the final data delivered to the user and verified. And so this is uh, in a nutshell trying to capture uh, how telescope manager is connected to every aspect of uh, the observatory. And, um, uh, uh, you know, all the way from the operator and scientist, uh, as well as engineers to all aspects of the flow of the signals uh, through the observatory. And this design work was done 2014 to 2018. And uh, we led a consortium. And this was interesting because as you would have gathered uh, by now from listening to the earlier talks that the SKA is a, a major exercise in collaborative work. And uh, that was a very interesting learning experience for us uh, to lead a consortium uh, with partners from uh, different countries, uh, different time zones, different cultures, um, and also having uh, some amount of participation from industry in the different countries with a significant amount of industry participation from India in the design phase work. And uh, so this all uh, has been a, a very great learning experience. It has uh, given significant um, insight to our industry partners as to how some of this work um, uh, is to be done and what does it involve. 
and we already have a, a, a very good uh, pool of human resources uh, trained both within the uh, institutions and in industry to, to move this forward during the construction phase. And uh, this, as was already talked about, uh, we uh, tried wherever possible to do work which can be synergized with our own activities so that we can both benefit from that activity in improving our facilities as well as provide learning and experience uh, which would help in the more complex um, uh, system that the SK uh, will be compared to uh, say a facility like the GMRT. And this uh, is an example which um, again already has been talked about uh, plenty, but I just wanted to show this to emphasize that uh, we actually did this and, and there were there have been very interesting learnings about uh, what can you do in Tango, what may be possible limitations, uh, which we've uh, ironed out and got a working system at the GMRT. Uh, but I'm sure that the people who've done this uh, will uh, be able to provide valuable insight as we go into the construction phase uh, for the SKA. And, um, and this was um, one of the first design consortia to finish uh, and clear the uh, critical design review in mid 2018. And I'll tell you later what we've been doing since then. And uh, this is something, again, uh, it attracted significant attention, uh, both within SKO, as we were the first people past the post, and uh, as well as in India about uh, the contribution that was made in uh, to the SKA. Uh, we also participated to a smaller extent in central signal processing and signal and data transport design uh, packages. And we are hoping uh, some aspects of that that may be picked up uh, or complementary aspects uh, as we move towards the construction phase. And the point that is worth noting is that in that process, we have built up a strong and viable industry interaction model. Uh, it also goes back to uh, the building of the digital systems for the Murchison Whitefield Array done by the Raman Research Institute, where again, there was uh, the significant amount of the construction that was outsourced to industry. and. Uh, that is again something that we are hoping to leverage uh, for our participation in the SKA low. And uh, just a bit about this, uh, uh, this bridging or prototyping phase that was also talked about earlier. That uh, So since completing the telescope manager design, we've uh, done a significant amount of early prototyping work, uh, which has really helped uh, to clear many of the open questions, including how you would actually do the interface with the other elements of the SKA, which is one of the most critical aspects of making it work uh, smoothly. And, um, and as I said, there are people who've, uh, from India who've uh, gained valuable experience and beginning to play uh, some key roles. And we have also been contributing uh, to the bridging activities in the Pulsar search processor in the science data processor, which is also one of our areas of uh, planned contribution in the construction phase. And uh, the, we most importantly, we joined the SKA Low Station Digital System Group for uh, participating in the prototyping activities and are now beginning to contribute in this area of work, uh, getting ready to have the first set of the hardware uh, of the prototype SKA Low uh, Digital Signal Processing Boards uh, available in our labs uh, in Pune and Bangalore and be able to start working on them in terms of uh, uh, testing them, uh, helping to work on the firmware for improving that, and then uh, thereby gearing up to be able to produce those systems in India and supply them to the SKA during the construction phase. And um, as was briefly alluded, we have uh, Indian teams participate in the SKA data challenge. You'll hear a bit more about the details of what the Indian teams have been doing. I mean, there were, uh, uh, there were Indian teams in the uh, data challenge one also, um, but in Data Challenge 2, we've managed to have a much larger participation, which I think, again, reflects our ability to have grown uh, the interest in the community in India to be able to, uh, to, uh, uh, to be able to involve in these kind of activities. So from there, I'll uh, move on uh, to looking up towards the construction phase. And, uh, and again, this I will not talk in much detail today because this is really the subject of a lot of the discussion tomorrow. There will be detailed presentations on uh, each of these different items as well as uh, discussion on uh, the uh, industry interaction uh, for uh, these different activities. But I'll just give the nutshell of the thing here, which is that we have been, uh, as part of the provisional allocation of the work packages, uh, we have been identified as the lead country for building what is 
uh, no longer called telescope manager because it's an enhanced uh, version. It's called the Observatory Monitor Control System, the OMC, uh, which is the original telescope manager plus all the local monitor control systems of all the elements now added into it. And um, uh, so this is, uh, we, uh, we uh, expected to contribute uh, about 50% of the work in this work package We're, and uh, working in partnership with uh, five other uh, member countries who will be contributing uh, the remaining. And this is something that we feel uh, that uh, given the experience and the ability that we've demonstrated over the last uh, six years or so, uh, that we are very well primed to take up this work and, and deliver it. Uh, in, in addition, we are now included in the SKLO construction team and uh, where uh, a, a lot of this work will be led by colleagues from Raman Research Institute and other SKIC members. And again, there will be significant contribution of Indian industry in building and uh, delivering these digital signal processing boards for the station level uh, processing of SKA low. And uh, we have a role in the SKA mid construction effort where we are uh, partners with the lead country, Sweden, to build the band one feed uh, in uh, in the country, uh, which uh, again uh, will be uh, uh, finally mass produced by partners from industry, where again, we've identified potential partners who uh, would be capable of doing this. And we are also included in the science data, which is actually now called SDHP uh, uh, package for um, as a member of the Pulsar search processing uh, team. And the overall, our aim is to be able to uh, have a contribution which is somewhere around 6% or so of the total construction cost of the SKA. And uh, we do hope that there would be additional scope for Indian industry to bid for some of the open contracts from the SKO, which are over and above what is, the, uh, what is India's committed contribution to the project. Um, further to this, uh, there are plans uh, so, uh, to, uh, for activities in India so that we can support this participation, namely a regional uh, data center, uh, which will house uh, uh, some fraction of the SKA data uh, and specific post-processing pipelines, which may be of relevance to the Indian science uh, community, um, as well as uh, the, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, all right, so I think I've missed one point, which may come later about in uh, in country um, uh, human resource development but uh, there is a aspect which is basically tied up with the science case and the science community advancing which again was referred to earlier by yogesh that uh, there's a significant component for human resource development uh, within the country uh, um, uh, uh, both in terms of uh, science capabilities as well as uh, technology capabilities uh, uh, which would both uh, help us in our participation in the SKA as well as uh, in in general in, uh, in 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 radio astronomy and astronomy in a broader context. And so that brings me to uh, what uh, we have now is that, as you heard already, that the plan for the SKA is complete construction of SKA one and start of the regular science operations by 2029 or so. And uh, what we have now. Um, uh, put together and uh, submitted to the government is a detailed Indian proposal, uh, which um, uh, uh, has a breakup, which is roughly like this, that as you heard earlier, that the cost for the SKA uh, consists of different components. There is a capital cost of construction, which is for building all the hardware and software that was described by uh, Phil and Joe. And then there are the commissioning and operation costs, uh, which will be, will be realized by annual contributions. And uh, as per the, um, the arrangement that the SKA has adopted, uh, a country can contribute up to 70% of their contribution to the capital cost of construction uh, as uh, via uh, in-kind contributions, which is the preferred mode that the government of India uh, prefers in when supporting uh, participation in such large projects. And so these are items that would be uh, built in India and supplied to the SKA. And uh, uh, these uh, the other ones that I already talked about, where we will be the tier one lead country for the delivery of the observatory management and control system. And we are the second largest contribution uh, in the SKA low digital signal processing system uh, behind the lead country, which is Italy. And, uh, and uh, as I mentioned, the uh, uh, band one uh, 
system for SKMID and the contribution to the PSS. And the remaining 30% of that contribution to the capital cost of construction is via cash contributions to the central procurement process that the SKA will run. And um, uh, in addition, we will be providing our share uh, to the commissioning and operations cost, uh, which will be via annual contributions. And uh, in addition to this, the proposal, as I mentioned earlier, has a significant component for in-country expenses, and that is to build uh, the data center in India, for of which uh, you'll hear the details tomorrow, so I won't talk uh, too much in detail. A prototype version we will build in the first few years, which will be synergized with um, storing uh, the, you know, uh, the larger volumes of data from the upgraded GMRT, as well as possibly from other radio astronomy facilities and the learnings from that to be utilized towards the uh, development of the full data center uh, in time for the 2028-29 time frame. And as I mentioned earlier, again, the significant component for human resource development uh, for the science community, as well as the significant component for in-country R&D, which is not um, counted as the direct contribution to the SKA project. So these are, these are items which are outside of India's direct contribution to the SK project and uh, have been put in, keeping in mind uh, the need uh, to be able to develop um, the community and the facilities in the country. And the current status of this is that the detailed proposal for this is currently under review by the DAE and the DST, which are the expected to be the two major funding agencies for our participation in the SKA. And uh, we are awaiting this final approval for both the funding for this duration, as well as the approval to for India to join the SKA treaty. As you heard from Phil, uh, we have not yet um, uh, signed and ratified the SKA treaty, and, have, uh, and currently we are now observers in the new SKA um, Observatory Council, uh, which had its first meeting on, uh, uh, on the 4th of February. And we are hoping to be able to change that by the time uh, the project actually kicks off into construction phase, um, uh, assuming that we have the final approval by that time. And so that's where we stand. It's an uh, interesting and exciting juncture where um, we've done significant work and uh, there is a, a very good preparedness for going on to the next phase. And uh, for um, if there is... Uh, people who still want to understand, I have this here, I'm not going to read all of this, uh, but the benefits for being in a large project like the SKA uh, span a, a variety or a range of aspects. And uh, I think it is something that uh, we uh, ought to keep in mind as we think and plan for the SKA. So with that, I'll just put up the summary and uh, and stop here and take questions. Thank you, Yashwan. Uh, we are now open for questions uh, on Yashwan's presentation. Uh, so again, those of you on Zoom, uh, sit directly or on the chat. On those of you on YouTube, uh, just type it in as a comment and we'll pick it up from there. Okay, that, that's good. It looks like uh, ah, there's somebody. Uh, so uh, I can read that question in the chat box. Um, yeah. So it says that from science and technology perspective, SK will augment GMRT or replace GMRT post 2030. Uh, that's a question that I think all countries which have large facilities uh, um, have, uh, have asked. And, and I think um, uh, what you will find is that um, 
uh, though the SKA will be much larger than any existing facility, um, it is not going to be able to do everything um, that is possible in terms of the different areas of science. And uh, there will certainly be uh, niche areas of science, as well as lots of follow-up uh, activities of various kinds, which some of the more sensitive facilities around the world uh, would be able to take up. Uh, complementary activities. So there was a question asked in the previous talk about, uh, for example, VLBI uh, capability with the SKA. To do VLBI with SKA, you will need uh, facilities with comparable uh, sensitivity uh, located in other uh, uh, locations on the earth to do the VLBI with. And so there will be scope for many of these kind of activities for a facility like JMRT. So it won't replace, the SK will not replace. Um, uh, it may well help uh, from the learnings from the SKA, one can improve existing facilities. And of course, there are plans that we have for further enhancing uh, the GMRT, uh, which would be dovetailed with the wider plans for uh, Indian participation in the SKA. So as, as I mentioned earlier, we recently finished an upgrade and um, uh, a time frame of uh, you know, uh, five to eight years is when you start asking, is this um, the scope for further um, improving or expanding a facility? And that question um, is being asked about the upgraded GMRT. And so, so they, they, and, and there are those other kind of things where uh, the work done uh, for the SKA uh, will be synergistic with uh, some of these uh, growth paths for our own facilities uh, and in different uh, member countries. Nobody's raised their hand, looks like. Uh, I, I have one question on uh, on the YouTube channel, which uh, is from Shayan Basu. He says, I'm a researcher at the South African Radio Astronomy Observatory, Sarau, uh, which is, of course, heavily involved in the SK. Uh, I'm interested to know about NCRA's involvement in the project. Sorry, I joined late. So I don't know whether you want to comment on that. Okay, it depends on how late he joined. <laughs> I mean, that's like pretty much a rewind of the talk. But um, I, I just, I mean, um, I, I will say it in maybe two sentences that um, uh, the takeaway message, if you see even from the summary screen uh, that I have uh, still up there, is that uh, India has significant involvement in the SKA. A lot of that Indian involvement is uh, led by NCRA. Uh, though now we are having more and more uh, participation from many of the other SK India consortium members. Uh, so that should give you a sense for uh, where NCR stands vis-a-vis uh, -vis involvement in the SKA. Yeah. So the, this this talk is being recorded. We'll, we'll put up the individual talks on YouTube. But even uh, right away, once this stream ends, you should be able to rewind and uh, watch uh, Yashwan's talk again on YouTube, uh, those of you who missed it. Are there any other questions or comments? Yes, uh, Dr. Yogesh, uh, can I ask a question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So we uh, did came across a uh, mention of uh, regional data centers uh, during Phil's talk. So, is there a site identified in India for setting up the regional data center? Uh, can we assume it is in Pune or? Yes, uh, you can assume that uh, the very high probability that it will be in Pune and likely to be in NCRA. And uh, maybe there may be some more detailed discussions about this in tomorrow's session. We have a, a session dedicated uh, to the SK regional centers uh, tomorrow afternoon. Sure, sure. Thank you. So there is one YouTube question, Yogesh. Uh, 
can is you if you can see it can you, can you read it out yeah, yeah. No, no. i would like to know this is from uday shankar i would like to know when the tenders will be floated for the outsourcing activities uh so uh, i presume that that's uh, a more specific question about tenders in india rather than a more general one to something like joe about tenders in the yes in i assume the a project, project right yeah. yeah so uh so this depends a little bit on the timelines of uh, the approval process and uh, also um the requirement vis-a-vis -vis the main uh, the uh, the overall timeline of the sk project itself so you heard about the uh, uh, planned timelines from uh, from joe um, as to when the kickoff is supposed to happen and when we are supposed to be in construction and the various milestones uh, in terms of the array releases and our aim would be to synchronize with them uh, but it's a little bit dependent on when we get the clearance from Uh, the the final approval from the government for the go ahead and um, uh, and and so uh, what uh, but i can i mean i can talk a little bit about the steps that would be involved in uh, in most of these industry participations and which is something probably will come in come up for more detailed discussion tomorrow which is we would have some kind of a initial pre qualification process uh, for uh, uh, for the industry partners uh for any one of those kind of uh, you know the work packages either the software or the hardware items that i talked about uh, followed by an actual uh, tendering uh, amongst the pre qualified industry partners and uh, uh, the uh, earliest i can see that happening is uh, uh the is at least a few months after the approval uh, uh comes from the government Uh, though we are talking about the possibility of running the pre qualification process uh, even um um during uh, while we are still under the bridging phase uh, funding support uh, but those are things that are still under discussion uh, because uh, the timeline for this approval is still uh, you know evolving in the sense that one doesn't quite know uh, when it will happen uh, and uh, and so uh, it's uh it, it, i mean i think that's the best uh, probably one can say at this point about the timeline for actually having the tenders out for the different activities that india will be uh, you know the, the work packages india will be providing to the ska are there any other questions there is one more youtube question uh, question is from kiran mehta this is regarding the fpga programming skills are they getting used in the ska in what different ways can individual developer can engage in such tasks okay uh, maybe prabhu you <laughs> you are the one who is best placed to answer that question but uh, but the thing is that uh, definitely the answer is whether fpga programming skills will be required for the ska that's a very strong yes um, i think you would have got the sense from the from joe's uh, talk about the large volumes of data that's being handled and processed and a lot of that is real time processing and um uh, you know today uh, one of the best platforms for doing uh, heavy duty real time data processing is still around the fpgas and and that is what is a uh, lot of the digital uh, hardware is likely to use uh, fpgas so there may be some fraction or some part of it which may uh, may have uh, gpu based computing and so definitely there's going to be a uh, a uh, very significant requirement for expertise in fpga uh, understanding as well as coding firmware and so on i briefly alluded to it when we talked about uh, the prototype digital boards for the ska low um, that we are uh, now beginning to uh, work on at the at the, the labs in uh, jmrt and rri and uh, the team members from there who were already experienced in doing this are going to be um very heavily involved in 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 that uh, work now when it comes to asking uh, i don't know if your question is from individual 
members who can contribute or industries who can contribute. I think there is scope for both. There's a, only the mechanism for engagement would have to be then worked out. And we'd be happy to uh, have the discussion with you uh, later on if uh, you have particular interests uh, as an individual or, or as a company. Any any further questions from the from the Zoom uh, meeting group? I'm just checking if there are any questions on the YouTube. Yeah. Okay, there is, uh, there is one question uh, about tomorrow's session which uh, has already been answered. There's a question, is there any telecommunication dish in India being upgraded for science as done in the African LBI network project? Yeah, uh, I can answer that very quickly. The answer is yes. We are actually currently in discussion for doing that for um, uh, a set of telecommunication antennas, which are located not very far from GMRT, uh, which was earlier the primary um, uh, telecommunication link for all the overseas communications from India before the era of optical fibers. Um, and But we are uh, some ways from being uh, uh, able to actually uh, make that into a working system, but there are active plans which are afoot, uh, which are coupled with a larger VLBI network in the country uh, which would be for dual purpose, both uh, astronomy and geodesy that is being planned. Okay, I think we have... Uh, if there are no further questions, uh, I will... Uh, uh, I'll thank all the three speakers of this afternoon's session. Uh, for their excellent uh, presentations and for answering uh, all our questions so patiently. Uh, we're not done yet. We are going to have a summary and wrap-up session. Uh, this session will be uh, coordinated by Dipankar Bhattacharya. And so I request Dipankar to take charge. And we, can, we can continue with the questions, clarifications on any of the three talks uh, that you want. And I'll let uh, the bunker uh, uh, control the proce proceedings from here on. Thank you. Thank you, Yogesh, and welcome everyone to this uh, discussion session. So, in this discussion session, um, it's uh, it's meant to be a open discussion. So, uh, if you have any questions which have been uh, uh, which are related to the talks which have preceded this. Uh, and which have not been answered yet, uh, you are free to raise them. And uh, you can raise questions where uh, the answer is not necessarily uh, meant to be given by the previous speakers, but uh, other participants who have joined in here as well. So uh, we have uh, seen uh, various aspects, we have covered various aspects of the SK in the previous talks, which is in including the kind of science it will be doing, the, um, the nature of the um, uh, telescope that it is going to be, the technical uh, design, the status, um, the, um, uh, how India is going to participate, and um, what kind of facilities we can expect in India in relation to it. As well as um, uh, there are there were um, uh, discussions about um, uh, how India will go about doing this participation and the human resource development. So now. You may also have questions regarding how you can participate. 
and you can raise those questions here as well. And remember that tomorrow there is a full session. And idea today was to do these discussions, prepare the ground so that you are fully engaged in the sessions tomorrow. So any questions? If anyone has anything to comment or question, I would request you to please raise hand or write in the chat box, please and also in the YouTube chat box. So while that is coming, I can uh, uh, just ask uh, Yashwant to perhaps give a uh, little more uh, elaboration on the idea of if uh, I am an individual, I am either uh, um, faculty in a in Indian college or university. I'm interested in SK. How can I get involved? Yeah, so I think that's a, a good question to kick off a discussion. So as I mentioned that uh, what we, uh, when we set up the SK India Consortium, uh, one of the, uh, the main idea was this, that we should be able to provide the avenue for participation for um, uh, people who are in different uh, institutions. And, uh, and and so the way one would couple in uh, would again depend a little bit on if it is just one sole individual uh, in that uh, university or institution, or is there a wider interest within the institution to be involved? So as I mentioned that for single individuals, there is scope to join as an associate member. And that uh, um, we uh, have had associate members. And uh, sometimes what has happened is somebody joins an associate member and then they're able to uh, come back after. I mean, they're able to have their institution join as a regular member after some time because they've been sort of uh, making the case within the institution. And I think that's uh, welcome and that's a good way. Uh, to build it up. And once you join, either as an uh, individual associate member or as an institution regular member, uh, if it depends on what is it that you're interested in. As I mentioned, that we have these two different tracks, the science subcommittee and the technical subcommittee. The science subcommittee is uh, uh, well set up along the different lines of the science working groups as well as promoting different aspects of the science in India. And so if you're interested in the science, uh, which means either um, being able to um, uh, contribute to the SK science case from India, or being able to, uh, or wanting to use the existing facilities, be it in our country or outside for, um, uh, you know, for trying out some of the science ideas uh, in, in uh, in uh, building up towards SKA, uh, then the uh, there there is both uh, the guidance and uh, the uh, providing. I mean, you know, make, giving access to avenues whereby you can do this. Um, for the technical activities, also again, there's a similar thing that uh, you can then uh, couple in into uh, any one of these ongoing technical activities, depending on what kind of uh, interest and skill sets you bring uh, to. Uh, to uh, to those activities, and uh, and a lot of that then works out based on the discussions that we have with the uh, uh, people who are joining the SK India consortium. So I think this was, I guess, addressing to a virtual. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so somebody has to say whether this was adequate of an answer or not, or are there follow-up uh, yes, uh, questions uh, from there? Yeah. Many many listeners are on YouTube, so yeah. may not get an immediate feedback. But I think uh, you made uh, a clear point there. Uh, there is a question on the chat box, which I was going to come to next. That, uh, um, the question is about, does the individual association valid for undergraduates? Um, as you know, in SK India Consortium at the moment, we uh, have only uh, permanent faculty members in different institutions uh, uh, as members, uh, even uh, associate members. So uh, what program do we have in mind 
for students who might want to contribute. Uh, Yashwant, you could uh, answer, or I could even ask Teet or uh, someone else to uh, get involved in answering those questions. Yeah, so maybe Teet or somebody may want to take that up. But I think it's a good thing, uh, it's a good question that we ought to think about if you want to sort of support young uh, undergraduates, individuals, is there some mechanism? Yeah. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, sorry, Dibanga. Okay. So we are uh, basically the question was about uh, some eco. Uh, I think, uh, think Dibankar, uh, your uh, laptop is producing the echo. Uh, yeah. If not hearing, yeah. So, yeah, uh, basically, um, how uh, do the young undergraduates? Uh, get involved uh, in the SK. Of course, in the long term, uh, the prospects are huge, uh, as was also mentioned uh, during the talks. Uh, the SK is some a facility which is going to come up like a decade down the line. So people who are young want to get into this research field. Uh, I mean, the options are open for all of them. Uh, they should just make sure they get into topics which are related to uh, the SK. They need not be only science topics in astrophysics and astronomy, but there are a lot of scopes in engineering and technical activities as well. In the short term, uh, what, uh, uh, I mean, as of now, there are no formal uh, uh, programs uh, from the SK project, which we will plan as the project final funding is sanctioned. But currently, I think the best option is to approach the SK India Consortium Institutes, the faculties uh, working there, and get involved in short-term projects right away. That should give them a lot of exposure in uh, what SK is doing. And they can also contribute uh, to building up of the SK in some form of the other. These could be making theoretical models to building some small components of the uh, instruments and work packages one is thinking about. So uh, this is, I think, what the young students should uh, look forward to. Any more details, they are welcome to get in touch with uh, any of us at any stage. Uh, Tirth, there is a question from Kaustub Gupta. He says, for example, can we work on short term or summer projects on science topics uh, using the SK? Uh, yes. You want to answer that? Yeah. Yes, of course. The short answer is yes. And I mean, obviously, yes. Uh, except, as I said, you, I mean, we don't have a, a program which is completely dedicated to the SK. But if you look at the SK India Consortium institutions, uh, a lot of them have uh, summer projects and there are faculties working on areas which are related to the SK. So the best option would be to get involved in these summer projects, either through formal ap applications or if the institutions uh, kind of allow, you can uh, just tie yourself up with one of the faculty members there and work on a short term project, uh, a summer project there. I mean, as I said, things would vary from institution to institution. Uh, and yes, so that would be a very good way of getting uh, involved with the SK related science activities using short term projects. Uh, I just wanted to add that uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, several of the student programs in the astronomy uh, research institutions are at the moment uh, either cancelled or summer programs are cancelled or they are uh, being suspended. Uh, so one hopes that the situation improves in the, in the next few months so that all of these programs can be restarted and then uh, there will be a lot of opportunities in the SK India Consortium uh, member institutions of which there are now more than 20. Deepankar, I think you are muted. 
Yes, <clears throat> sorry, I uh, had muted myself when Yogesh said there was an echo. So <clears throat> thank you, Teeth and Yogesh, both were very useful comments. Um, there is a question that, from YouTube, I think, which Nirupam has picked and uh, pasted here, and that says, it's from Simon Basu. <clears throat> I assume India being an associate member in the SK, NCR is already involved in the science using the CAT7 data, um, MeerKAT data. So um, uh, that actually did not require India to be an associate member of the SK, but um, uh, several groups in India are involved in the um, uh, in uh, science using uh, MeerKAT. Uh, Tirth, would you like to um, comment on that as well? Yes, I mean, if uh, the question, uh, okay. So I guess the question uh, mentioned Meerkat, but let me just generalize the question a bit and uh, talk about whether um, Indian uh, like scientists are involved with the SK precursors, uh, the, the instruments which are exactly there where SK will be built. And if you think of the precursors, then uh, uh, the, the two which come to mind immediately are the Meerkat, and the MWA. And I mean, it's, it's a very happy situation for us that Indian scientists are, uh, are very much involved in both of uh, these instruments. Uh, uh, I mean, they're they are really leading uh, mega projects. Uh, uh, I mean, oh, I shouldn't say mega projects. They are lead, really leading very science intensive and, and high uh, resourceful projects uh, using these uh, two telescopes. So uh, when I talk about Meerkat, the project which comes to my mind immediately is uh, H1 survey being carried out by people in Ayuka, but also this involves people uh, from uh, other countries uh, and, and other institutions as well. And uh, for MWA, of course, the Raman Research Institute have, has been uh, closely involved with various phases of the MWA. And also uh, people uh, in NCRA, uh, I mean, working in solar physics and other areas are, are using MWA data routinely to do their science cases. So yes, so the again, the answer is, uh, yeah, Indian scientists are very much uh, involved in the SK precursors uh, at this stage. Yes, so one should not forget that in, uh, UGMRT is also one of the path, pathfinders. Pathfinder, yeah. And uh, there are projects which involve the um, escape precursors like um, Meerkat and UGMRT together. Like um, one of the things that uh, has been uh, sort of started is this thing called Super Mighty, where it's a large continuum survey over a, a large range of frequencies. So you have com complementary frequencies between GMRT and Meerkat. And that is producing very interesting results as well. Yeah, there is a YouTube question on uh, from Shayan Basu. Uh, I think another aspect will be for students to get involved in inter interferometric imaging and identifying calibrator sources, which will be an important aspect in future for the SK observations. So maybe Yashwant uh, wants to answer that. I don't know. Uh, no, I, I can uh, take a stab at that. There's uh, interesting questions coming from the youngsters on YouTube. That's good. Uh, so uh, that's certainly true that uh, as we go, uh, you know, uh, the SKA imaging exercise will have its own series of challenges. Um, and uh, uh, one of which will certainly be how you calibrate the instrument, uh, especially SKA low. Uh, and even SK mid will have some challenges. Um, and uh, in that sense, uh, you know, learning how to do that with existing facilities uh, is, uh, is an interesting exercise. 
it's uh, it needs to be seen as to how relevant one could make that for, for, by using the pathfinders for the actual full sk um, uh, because some of the calibration challenges uh, are quite different especially for sk lo but it's certainly that's it's certainly a room for a lot of discussion there and and uh, thinking and planning all right is, there is also scope of course for contributing in the technical activities um, in addition to science and uh, uh, calibration is uh, one such thing um, but also towards contributing towards things in in the construction phase but in the, so are there any questions regarding that so maybe i can phrase a question which might be in some people's mind that in the, if i am a technically capable entity let's say i am a small industry or i am an individual who has specialized knowledge how do i know what opportunities exist for me for contributing in, um, towards the sk construction so uh, maybe yashwant can uh... sorry can you just um, uh, just i mean uh, you you are asking that if yeah so if i am uh, let's say a small industry with some specialized expertise or i am an individual where i have some relevant expertise how do i know what opportunities exist for me to contribute towards the sk yeah so i think in some sense uh, that is a bit of a parallel with what we discussed earlier about uh, and i would say certainly for individuals who have technical expertise and are wanting to contribute uh, the best thing would be to approach the sk india consortium and then uh, we can have that detailed discussion for small industries again wanting to contribute uh, you can certainly still approach the consortium um the uh, via media for how that would happen would need then to be discussed and seen it would depend on the specific uh, uh, area of expertise and uh, the kind of contribution but we may be able to find a way of doing that um because when we ourselves go in for the larger um uh, tenders or work orders uh, we may be having constraints on who we work with how we work with but it may be possible for uh, subcontracts where uh, somebody with a specific expertise or a smaller company with expertise can be coupled in into the work right um you um, mentioned this in your talk but it must not have been uh, very clear to everyone that you know, there is a certain amount of fair work return for india but there is a certain amount of assured you know, in kind contribution which is expected from among the you know, funding that we will receive however there is also a <clears throat> fraction of the full you know, sk construction which is open for participation and bidding you know, internationally and you know, so if any of our industrial uh, partners wish to engage in that open area do we have a mechanism by which we enable such participation Prabhu, would you like to uh, take that question? Yeah, Deepankar, could you slightly rephrase that? Uh, yeah, sorry, I got disconnected for a while, but I don't know. Uh, yeah. So the question was that. Uh, <clears throat> that question. In addition to the um, 
to the in country work that we will have out of our sk participation itself the uh, in kind contribution that india makes there is also a pool of work in, which is available for participation in by open uh, bidding in the full sk uh, construction which is actually larger fraction of the work so if any of our industries would like to take up that something from that bit of work which is open yeah. but we are ourselves not uh, uh, assigned to do that part of work is there a mechanism for uh, uh, enabling our industries to participate in such yeah. activities so uh, so what the the ska has a concept of a industry liaison officer uh, for each country and uh, we need to uh, you know streamline that process have a formal uh, role and responsibility for industry liaison officer whose one of the main goals would be this that be able to um, be aware of what kind of um, central procurement activities are happening in the sk and that person would have access to that information if uh, you know if nothing else there certainly uh, i mean that would be public information it's just that you need to know when it's uh, happening and it would be a global public tender um, and be able to uh, so that industry liaison uh, officer should be able to both disseminate that information more efficiently within the country as well as provide some guidance uh, uh, and tips for the indian industries that are wanting to uh, compete in that uh, process and so that is something that uh, we probably need to work a bit more to set it up in a in a more um, organized fashion right <clears throat> any more questions uh, from youtube or uh, from among the people here no no dipankar i don't see any more question in the youtube now so uh, so uh, again uh, i think you touched upon this yashwant in your talk a little bit but uh, maybe since there is time you could uh, say a bit more about what has been the indian participation uh, in, by indian industry participation in, uh, in the project already so far oh, you mean what has been indian industry participation yes yes yeah. so specifically in the sk project we our uh, the maximum focus of indian industry participation has been in the work that we did uh, and have been continuing uh, in the telescope manager uh, where uh, we uh, have participated with indian industry partners uh, for the design phase in fact even that i mentioned briefly that concept design that we did in 2011 was also done in partnership with the uh, Uh, the uh, the industry members uh, and uh, and also you know r and d groups of uh, of industry r and d cells from industry and uh, that has proven very useful and um, there is a, a a good amount of uh, that design work and followed up with this prototyping work that's going on which is being uh, done uh, by the partners from industry and um, uh that has actually uh, been at the level where uh, even the individuals from the industry are being then recognized by the sk as valuable contributors and that's like well we are able to identify who are the or the kind of uh, you know workforce that would be needed uh, for the construction phase um, of course they have to come through the pre qualification process and the rest of the thing and uh, so that has been a significant plus because i don't think by ourselves just from the resources from our own labs we would have been able to make that amount of contribution so you know this point that was mentioned by joe about the safe methodology mm -hmm. scale agile framework and that is something which um, 
maybe we follow informally in our way that you work for some time then you find out what's the next most important thing and you do it but industry has a very well organized way of how to deliver things in a safe agile manner and that when it was introduced by the project office and i think some of that probably even came from project offices uh, interaction with indian industries during uh, visits uh, over here as to what are the best ideas or practices uh, we found that uh, you know the in our industry partners said yes this is something that uh, we are okay with there's no problem in uh, adopting to this methodology of delivering and uh, in fact some of our own uh, members from our research i mean from our labs have uh, Uh, got exposed to the process and have got trained in that process and would be uh, valuable members going forward uh, during the construction phase so in you know the in in that sense there has been quite a bit of contribution and if you ask prabhu uh, the in the mwa uh, phase during which rri built hardware for the mwa uh, there has been again a significant engagement with industry to be able to build these things and contribute without which anything which is beyond some scale of of mass production really cannot be handled uh, uh, within our uh, research labs and their uh, resources and the sk will definitely you know uh, be at that scale where uh, the industry has to contribute yeah i can uh, request prabhu to add to this in, uh, with the hardware co- um, related contributions that are that have been made and are going to be made prabhu ah oh, yeah i was muted <clears throat> yeah thanks actually there are quite a bit of uh, uh, you know limitations that we as a scientific institute and a laboratory in a scientific institute has uh, for a sorry i got muted so for a design such as what we need for the ska especially in the digital boards and so on we do have enormous amount of industry potential uh, when they get actually connected with the scientific institutes such as the, what we did for the mwa work we uh, we were able to build systems for example the system that we built for that are still operational in the mwa data set for the last 7 years had no failure no single failure so we do have that industry capabilities the industries participated uh, from india actually built the printer circuit boards and also assembled them so we used a little bit of the laboratory capabilities uh, to make these things happen so these efforts are going to be hundreds of times uh, you know amplified when the ska is actually going to be built uh, with the indian industry so we do anticipate the industry capabilities are enhanced and we know now better way to work with them and uh, we we also know exactly where the uh, further activities that the industries will be able to do it uh, much more than what we did for mwa so we we anticipate uh, this is going to be a very good success uh, in the ska building era uh, which is very soon from now right thank you um, so uh, one of the things that we are going to have we are planning in the ska activities as a whole is in addition to the contribution we directly make to the construction of the telescope and observatory itself we have a significant amount of activity in the, inside the country which includes the regional data center as well as some in country research and development so um, yogesh could you give a brief uh, idea as to the scale of this activity let's say in about the data center that we um, are hoping to take up within the country yes uh, thank you dipankar uh, the the data products that will be produced by the sk observatory are what are referred to as standard standard data products uh, which will come out of the science data processing pipelines but in order to convert these standardized data products into science uh, you need additional resources uh, both to uh, Uh, both in terms of the kind of compute that you need to run on the data also you need specialized resources to download those data and all of this 
is envisaged to be done inside what are called uh, SK regional centers. These centers will be distributed geographically across the globe. Uh, you saw slides from Phil uh, the, and uh, Joe that talked about that. And we are planning to locate one of the SK regional centers within India. Uh, it will be a very large effort on, on scales that we have never uh, built in India before. So the idea, therefore, is to take uh, baby steps first and uh, try to build a prototype uh, SK regional center over the next four or five years, uh, gain experience. Uh, in the prototype data center, we envisage that we will use it, uh, for example, for processing data uh, from facilities that we already have access to, for example, the upgraded GMRT or facilities in which our scientists are heavily involved in, like MWA or Meerkat and so on. Uh, once we gain that experience, the idea is to scale out to much larger scales. So the numbers that we are talking about for the full SRC, which we will build after 2025, are of the order of something a data center that is able to ingest of the order of 100 petabytes of data every year. So uh, uh, it is uh, going to grow within 10 years. It was going to grow to exabyte uh, sizes in terms of the storage. In addition to that, we will also have commensurate compute so that the data that is sitting in the storage uh, can be extracted and uh, can be processed and can be converted into a form uh, which is ready for science. And remember, we are not going to do this all in isolation. The data are going to be distributed uh, over a worldwide global network of about, say, half a dozen uh, regional centers. And we will provide users with a common portal so that uh, they will be able to access uh, uh, these data sets in a completely uh, transparent way. So for example, like if you want to check your Gmail, you just go to gmail.com. You don't have to worry, worry about where exactly which server is serving your email to you. So the user experience, we hope, will be something similar to that, wherein the users will simply uh, log into a common portal. And from there, they will gain access to uh, uh, whatever data that they need or want. Uh, there will, of course, be authentication mechanisms to make sure that people only gain access to data sets that they're authorized to use. I think that's a quick summary. There will be a session tomorrow where we will talk for one and a half hours on all of this. That's right. Thank you. Because not everybody may come tomorrow. It's And also for people who will come tomorrow, having this prelude helps in uh, tuning into the discussion more easily. So thank you very much. I think that's a very good summary. Uh, so there are, uh, there is one question is in two parts from YouTube, from Kastub Gupta. And I think this is a perfect question for Keith. If Keith can see that. So um, how can SK contribute to cosmology? And will SKIC provide opportunities for students interested in cosmology or in other topics outside of radio astronomy? Cosmology is not outside radio astronomy. Cosmology is very much at this <laughs> Yes, Deepakar. Yeah, yeah. I mean, radio astronomy has made tremendous uh, contributions to uh, cosmology. So that's something often is not appreciated, but this is something we can start with. Uh, yes. So uh, again, I mean, uh, rather than going into details here, I mean, I would really urge you to take a look at the SK International website and their science cases. There is a wide range of topics in cosmology which will be addressed by the square kilometer array. Uh, this uh, involves, now, for example, things like constraining the nature of dark energy, understanding dark matter, to probing the early universe with first stars, uh, the evolution of galaxies uh, throughout the universe, and so on. So the, the topics are wide uh, ranged and and. Uh, SK, I mean, in different wave bands are going to actually contribute uh, to our knowledge in cosmology. And now since uh, we have, uh, I mean, I'm, I hope we have been able to convince you that cosmology and radio astronomy are not too far apart. It's definitely possible to do SK related projects. 
uh, in cosmology, uh, both short term and long term. Thank you. I hope that um, addresses the question. We can't get immediate feedback, so, uh, but I think that was a good answer, Pete. Thank you. Any other questions from anyone in Zoom? If not, we are coming close to the end of the session. So um, uh, I think we have had a very nice wide ranging discussion for the last three, uh, three hours um, uh, on various aspects of the SK, um, both um, science as well as um, construction, um, uh, Indian uh, involvement, uh, how Indian individuals and other entities can participate. And this is basically laying the ground for the full day workshop tomorrow. So that you know, if, through these discussions, you are, you, know, you absorb the preliminary information which is going to be useful in the discussions in all these aspects in more detail um, in tomorrow. So I would like to thank all the people who have contributed to today's discussions, the three speakers who started this session today so wonderfully, and all the moderators and everyone who has helped through this, this session today. So I hope we will see all of you uh, in the meeting tomorrow.